In a worldwide market with dozens of Android smartphones, you may find it challenging to find the very best budget device. With so many options, all claiming to offer the best bang for your buck, it can be pretty overwhelming to try to find the best of the bunch. We've taken all of the work out of that though, with a selection of the best budget devices on the market today. This is Bailey Stein with Android Authority, and these are the best budget smartphones you can buy for under $200. The best all-around cheap smartphone you can buy right now is the Asus Zenfone 2. Now the Zenfone 2 did receive quite a bit of hype when it was announced back at CES 2015 for being the first smartphone with 4GB of RAM, but there's much more to the story. Asus's top offering does feature a 2.3GHz quad-core processor, 4GB of RAM, and 64GB of storage, but it also costs $300. Just as they did in 2014, Asus also wanted to target the budget smartphone market. The base model of the Zenfone 2 sold in the US has a 1.8GHz quad-core processor, 2GB of RAM, and 16GB of storage. For $199, you still get a very powerful phone with some mid to high-end specifications. The Zenfone 2's 5.5-inch 1080p display looks excellent, although it may be a bit too large for some users. However, the phone's curved design makes one-handed use easier, and the rear-facing volume keys are an excellent departure from the norm. Placed on the very top, the power button is difficult to reach and press, but the phone does support double tap to wake. Despite the Zenfone 2 being made completely of plastic, it still feels nice and solid in the hand. The base model is plenty fast with the Intel Z3560 1.8GHz quad-core processor, and gaming performance with the Power VR G6430 is very difficult to match at this price point. And Tutu ranks the phone's performance just below the Samsung Galaxy S5, a phone that launched last year for $600 locked. Needless to say, the Zenfone 2 is one of the faster Android phones available, despite having a lower price. Even if 16GB doesn't sound like enough space, Asus has you covered with microSD card expansion up to an additional 64GB. The 13MP camera is pretty good for the price, and the phone's 3000mAh battery will get most users through a full day of use with an upwards to 3-4 to four hours of screen on time. The Zenfone 2 does ship with Android 5.0 Lollipop and Asus's ZenUI, which some users may dislike. A lot of the changes made in ZenUI do improve the user experience though, and many of the UI elements are close to stock Android. The best part about the software experience though is Asus's commitment to frequent firmware updates. Asus has shown us in the past that they are willing to keep their devices up to date, as the Zenfone 5 went from Android 4.2 Jelly Bean to Android 4.4 KitKat to Android 5.0 Lollipop. And if they continue their running trend for the Zenfone 2, the overall experience will only get better. If you're in North America, you can use the Zenfone 2 to receive 4G LTE on AT&T and T-Mobile in the United States and Rogers Wireless in Canada. Few unlocked phones support both AT&T and T-Mobile 4G LTE, let alone devices that cost under $200. Finally, it does have dual SIM support, meaning that you can use two carriers at once, although only one SIM card can be used for 4G LTE. For less than $200, you really can't go wrong with the Asus Zenfone 2. But what if you're looking for something smaller or want a stock Android experience? The Motorola Moto G second generation may be a good choice then for $180. With a 5-inch 720p display that looks nearly as good as the Zenfone 2's, one-handed use is much easier with the Moto G. The phone has a really nice design, although it doesn't feel as solid in terms of build quality as the Zenfone 2, or even our third pick. You don't have to deal with an oddly positioned power button though, which will likely appeal to users who prefer a power button over a double tap to wake. The front speakers on the Moto G are also superior to the Asus Zenfone 2's single rear speaker. Although the quality of the output is about the same, the Moto G has the advantage of having stereo speakers facing towards the user, which does make the audio sound better while using the phone. Unfortunately, the Moto G isn't nearly as fast as the Zenfone 2, but it's still usable. The power-efficient Snapdragon 400 quad-core processor clocked at 1.2GHz is enough for basic tasks, but the 1GB of RAM makes the Moto G feel sluggish at times. Luckily, stock Android manages the low amount of RAM well, but it still can be a problem when opening more than a few apps at once. The jump from 1 to 2 gigabytes of RAM is a major one, at least right now, and that's where I think the Zenfone 2 really has the edge over the Moto G. The Moto G does include 8 gigabytes of internal storage, which can be expanded up to 64 gigabytes via microSD. 
the 8 megapixel camera isn't very good, but the 2070 milliamp battery will get most light users through a full day with up to 2.5 to 3 hours of screen on time. One obvious advantage of the Moto G second generation is that it ships with stock Android. Motorola has updated it from Android 4.4 KitKat to Android 5.0 Lollipop, and it can be expected that they will continue to update the phone for a little bit longer. If you're a fan of stock Android, you may want to seriously consider this phone over the other options. The Moto G unfortunately does not support 4G LTE networks, at least in the US it doesn't. That means you'll only receive up to HSPA Plus or 4G speeds, which is essentially glorified 3G. The good news is, is that the US model is unlocked and does support both AT&T and T-Mobile, so you aren't tied to a single carrier. If 4G LTE isn't available where you live and you really just want a stock experience or you prefer to have a smaller device, the Moto G second generation is a good choice for $180. I do have one more recommendation though for users who want to try something a little different. That recommendation comes from none other than Chinese smartphone manufacturer Xiaomi. The Xiaomi Redmi 2 is an excellent choice for users wanting to experience MIUI and all that Xiaomi has to offer while still keeping a tight budget. Availability is going to be the bottleneck here, although you can buy the Redmi 2 from official resellers like iBuyGal. Importing the Redmi 2 does slightly inflate the price, but it's still the cheapest phone on our list. Now there are two models of the Redmi 2 and a few variations based on intended carrier support. The base model of the Redmi 2 has 1GB of RAM and 8GB of internal storage and runs for about $150 on import. The price may be attractive, but you should really instead consider the Redmi 2 Pro which has 2GB of RAM and 16GB of internal storage. The Redmi 2 Pro does cost a bit more at about $170, but that's going to be $20 well spent for virtually all users. In the hand, the Redmi 2 feels surprisingly solid and very comfortable. The 4.7 inch 720p sharp AUO display looks pretty good, with quality coming really close to that of the Moto G and viewing angles being just as good, or slightly better even than those found on the Zenfone 2. The rear speaker on the Redmi 2 does seem to be louder than the speakers on both the Zenfone 2 and Moto G, although the Moto G still has the least amount of audio distortion. When it comes to performance, the base model Redmi 2 is slightly faster than the Moto G. Both the base and pro models of the Redmi 2 have 1.2GHz Snapdragon 410 quad-core processors, which is a slight improvement over the Snapdragon 400. The Pro model should be faster and much better with multitasking, however, since it has 2GB of RAM instead of just 1GB. MIUI isn't as good as memory management as stock Android though, and I found myself running into issues more frequently than I did on the Moto G, at least with the 1GB variant. If you get the 2GB model though, the performance should be better than the Moto G, but unfortunately still inferior to the Zenfone 2's performance. Although the Redmi 2 does have microSD card support up to 64GB, MIUI does not allow apps to be moved or installed onto the microSD card. The Redmi 2's 8MP camera is pretty good, and the 2200mAh removable battery in the Redmi 2 should get most users through a full day of use with roughly 3 hours of screen on time, depending on your usage. The Redmi 2 runs Xiaomi's fork of Android, MIUI 6 over Android 4.4 KitKat. MIUI is a pretty heavy Android skin, and it has been criticized for taking some inspiration from a certain fruity tech company, but the experience is truly unique and different compared to stock Android. Xiaomi does release occasional updates for the Redmi 2, and if you flash the developer ROM, you can even receive an update every Friday. Xiaomi is known to be pretty optimistic on the release timelines, but hopefully we'll see an Android 5.0 Lollipop update within the next 6 months. Unfortunately for the Redmi 2, the Zenfone 2 and Moto G are likely to receive Android updates much faster than the Redmi 2. While the Redmi 2 is slightly better than the Moto G overall in terms of hardware, availability is a major challenge with the Redmi 2. You can't officially buy the phone in the United States, meaning that you'll have to import it. Importing won't get you the standard 1 year warranty that many people expect. The models available for import are not intended for the US market either, meaning that carrier support isn't always what you may expect. Like the Zenfone 2, the Redmi 2 does have dual SIM card support. Unlike the Moto G, which supports both AT&T and T-Mobile HSPA Plus or 4G, the Redmi 2 has limited support for US carriers, depending on the specific variant. There is a variant that supports WCDMA 850, 1900, 2100MHz, which is fully compatible with AT&T and partially compatible with T-Mobile depending on your specific coverage area. 
I wouldn't recommend buying the Redmi 2 unless you're on AT&T or an AT&T MVNO, and even then, please make sure to confirm that you're getting the right variant. I like to think of the Redmi 2 as being the option for users wanting something different. It's a great phone, but it is difficult to get and carrier support can be a bit complicated. So there you have it, my top 3 picks for the best budget smartphones under $200. There are other options available of course, but I tried to keep this list exclusive to the phones with the absolute best value. Each and every user has different needs, so it's important to evaluate what you want before jumping in and making a purchase. Thank you for watching this video, and please make sure to give it a thumbs up below if you found it helpful or informative. Also, please make sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more content, and feel free to leave a comment below. Finally, be sure to visit the Android Authority website for additional coverage, as we are your source for all things Android.